Today at the Pottery, we're gonna see whose potter's throwing skills can hold the candle the best. Hey class, welcome back. Mr. G, your online professor, doing this YouTube series devoted to the great pottery throwdown. Again, it's that British TV show. If you guys can watch it on HBO Max, totally recommend that you watch it. It's a fabulous show, but figure for those of us that can't watch it, figure I'll make some videos to go over it. So today's lesson is over candlesticks. So let's go into that make a little bit. Now for a candlestick, you're dealing with a couple basic elements. Now you want to get a strong cone shape developed first as you're starting to, starting to throw on the wheel, as you're centering that clay, center it in a cone shape. It's just kind of saving a step as you go further down the line. Now let's go ahead and talk about how the mistake that I made where I was, I'm just kind of being a little too rough with it, popped in half. I used, uh, I just kind of rescored the two pieces together and re-wedged it on the wheel. This is a thing that I've done before where I'll have pieces that take off, that come off of the wheel. And some people will say, you need to re-wedge it, you need to pug the clay out. I agree, that is a good method to use. However, I can also use the wedging method on the wheel where I'm taking the clay and I'm trying to reforce it around itself. So I'm actually taking the clay and trying to wedge it out on the wheel, pushing it down, raising it back up, pushing it down again, raising it back up. And what I'm doing is I'm trying to get any air pockets that are in there out uh, all on the wheel head so that I don't have to take it off and, and make a new piece. Uh, it's out of sheer laziness. I'll be honest with you, that's that's 100% what it is. And, but it works. And I think having another skill in your toolbox is always a helpful benefit. Now, there's not a lot I can really say about a candlestick as you're making it. You're going to create a cylinder shape out of solid clay. Now, this is not always recommended. I, I've thrown both styles where I make the solid piece of clay, which is what I'm doing here. And these are just for illustration purposes. I just am using this to showcase how to do it. Uh, one other method is where you hollow it out in the in the beginning initially and then re kind of cone it back over the top. And the reason you do that is so that you thin the clay inside the body of the candlestick. And that just is, ensures that it's gonna fire properly. I'm not firing these pieces, they're going to be recycled. I'm but just for the purposes of the process, I just want you guys to see that. Uh, making a cone there at the top just to have something that holds the candlestick. Remember, the candle stick has to be able to fit in there after the firing. So when you throw these pieces, the candlestick needs to be 10% plus bigger than a normal traditional candlestick. So if the candlestick is about the size of your index finger, you want it to be about the size of your thumb or a little bigger than that because as the clay shrinks inside the kiln, you're gonna have uh, a loss of space, a loss of size in the overall dimensions that you had initially. Now, looking at a pattern on a candlestick, that's solely up to you and how you want to add those pattern designs on there. However, for me, I definitely am doing two. I just wanna have them very similar to each other. You can also shave them down on the sides. You can use trim tools. You can use uh, bats, beading bats. Is, uh, uh, I don't remember what the specific name is for them, but in my class we just call them the beaters or uh, or use the uh, the paddle, which I know the paddle is probably the term to use, but you know, make it more interesting, make it more fun. Now, got my two candlesticks made. Uh, these have been drying out for several days, and you can definitely see that they are solid clay on the interior all the way up to where they're going to be holding the candlestick at the top. Overall, good proper design, nice changes in the body shape of the candlestick so that you have some sort of form, some dimension to it. So it has kind of a, it, it has a body all to its own. So you have the, the head to the body to the base section down here. And each section is unique in that it breaks up the space so that there's, your eye can travel across the line and makes a beautiful, elegant piece. Now, as I said before, when these are going to be for, these are only for test pieces. If you're throwing these in the future, open it up at the bottom. As you bring the clay up to cone again, close it at the top, then continue to extend it up and then reopen it at the top to hold the candlestick. Yes, there'll be solid clay in the middle, but the thickness of the solid clay in the middle will not be as thick as the clay in the, in the bottom here, which is the largest and widest section. So you don't want to make sure that your weight is a little more evenly distributed. All right, that's where I'm gonna be ending class today, guys. I hope that you got something fun out of this experience. Again, great pottery throwdown. The people that I'm finding online on IG, go check out their websites. I'm putting all their links in the descriptions below as well as uh, the great pottery throwdown. I think they have a YouTube channel even. Go out there, show some love to these guys. Try and get pottery more into the into 
the wheelhouse of everybody that we come across. I love clay. It's my thing. I definitely want to do more of it and I definitely am going to continue to do more of it. So pausing on class today, but before we go, let's go not forget our homework, which is like, subscribe, share on all the various platforms. Get the message out there to as many teachers, friends, students as we possibly can. Educate the masses. That is always my goal. Uh, don't forget, if you guys had a question, comment, or concern, raise your hand in the comments below. Happy to answer those questions with my classmates. As always, I will see you guys next class. So until then, later guys.